Hey folks, this is Brian Ross. Welcome back to Bro Do Yourself Condo Renovation. I think this is series number eight. I'm going to bring you up to date on uh, a little bit of progress I made. I felt like the Ed Sullivan show today. There was I can remember as a kid watching this guy with pool sticks and he had white plates and he was spinning plates on about five or six pool sticks. That's what I felt like today. I had so many when we got uh, blood tests and had to take a couple hours rest, sleep, had to go shopping and get some crap for, you know, this, that, and another, another piece of PVC, and, you know, I mean, it's just a typical day in the uh, life of a, a do-it-yourselfer, but uh, the whole thing uh, centered around getting the, uh, <clears throat> these boxes set up for uh, uh, line runs, so to that end, I really need to step back and look at this panel, the main. Okay, so the main, I figured out I had a couple of double stack 15 or 20 amp, I can't remember, I'd have to go check it out. It's a moot point at this, this, this venture. But I had a double stack 30 amp, and uh, I got rid of that thing today. It's been bugging me ever since I've been using it. I don't know if he used it to back um, feed or if he used it to. Uh, I'm the one to put energy out to the garage through Romex uh, 10 2 or 10 3, whatever it was I've got up there. But um, this thing here was piggybacked on a 30 uh, amp uh, breaker. And I said, that's going today. Well, I'm in this box because I had to get in the box to drill this hole. I had to get in there to drill that hole to uh, uh, have access to. Uh, because there was no knockout in that location. I wanted to go from here to here. And then, uh, of course, there was one already here. And I drilled a hole in here in this uh, sub-panel. So, let me bring you close. Because I have something to show you. Um, it was disturbing, to say the least. And, uh, uh, there again, you know, it's just a, just a deal where God must have been smiling at, on me. Because uh, it could have been a big deal. This is the 30 amp fuse. You see this red and black, and of course there's a white and ground. That runs the dryer. Okay, that was the breaker that was uh, servicing the double stack, the piggybacked uh, line that fed out and came out and was hooked up here. You can see back here and down here, and I don't know. Back in the day, they must have had a technique where they twirled these or braided them or something, because I haven't had one stinking line that has come straight from a, a um, service entry. And down here, you can see they're all twirled around and intertwined. And I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. I guess that's the way they made them look neat back in the day. But I'll tell you what, it's a, a pain in the ass crack to deal with that. Um, I hijack this other line just just for temporary movement man because I had a double stack here and I wanted to make a room here for the 125 amp but I have to get back to this point here you can see this I don't know if you can see it or not I'm going to try to bring you in and since I can't see the camera I'm going to try to bring you in you can see that I don't know if you can see it or not watch me stick it I don't know if you're getting that or not but my point is is that's right off of this 30 amp, that linear. That's been arced to the point of, uh, I don't know if it's one arc. It looks like it might have been a single arc. I know it had it break on me one time, and that could have been the time. But I'll tell you what, the whole house could have gone up, you know. The whole damn place, could have, the, whole, the whole show could have been over. That's what you ha happens when you do things the wrong way. That's why these insurance companies are so anal about having disconnects and uh, ground fault and GFCI and all kinds of uh, all kinds of regulations. It's because of idiot moves like that. And when my lights were dimming upstairs, I didn't have the wherewithal or electric know-all to come down and see if there was something double stack. I knew now, you know. But uh, there again, I was just blessed that uh, the whole damn thing didn't go up, you know. That's why they've got the breakers, you know. But uh, for crying out loud, it, it would have taken a hell of a flash. I mean, a hell of a flash and a long flash to burn those lines like that. 
So anyway, that's done. Don't have to worry about that anymore. I've got a 30 amp fuse or breaker here that I'm going to do it legal. I'm going to drop this room mix. Right now I have no compressor or anything in my garage and I got I got to do the timing belt and uh, CV joints because my, t my wife needs tires. It's got 90,000, 90, 98,000 now she does door dashes. She puts miles on like crazy. You're supposed to change that timing belt out at 90. I keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But now, because she had like 3 sixteenths left on the tread, but even she mentioned that the, the, the front's floating a little bit. So that's an amazing thing to me. I must be training her right to uh, be attuned to how the car is. She told me about the alternator going back. She heard something a little different. So I'm 30 years older than her, when I check out, I want her to have the, the wherewithal. But to that end, I've got to have a compressor to uh, work on uh, changing out that I want to take since I got to get in there since I got to get in that skirt and monkey around with a little sonic take that thing apart I'm just going to pull the lowers the tie rod in I and mean, you can't grease anything anymore it's all from the factory so I'm going to replace all that crap I've got it all sitting out in the garage except the CV joints which I misordered they're coming Tuesday I think from Rock Auto and um but to that end, I'm going to have a compressor. Well, I don't have any compressor. I don't have any power to my workbench right now. It's because this thing here is hooked into that thing there. And uh, that's no more. So that's a good thing. I feel really, really good about that. What I'll do is just pop the power off like I did today. I had to turn the power off. I had to turn that power off to... Uh, to drill my hole in my main. Here's the secret to that too, is make sure, it's no big deal drilling a hole in a main panel or any panel, but uh, the secret is, you see that hole? I had to do the same thing to the main, but the secret is, when you get done, make sure you clean all that crap out. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of debris that's uh, created by that heavy, uh, hold on just a second, let me, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about over here. I got, the good thing about it is, is that uh, all that stuff cleaned out really well, the hole's made and everything's ready to go. But see how aggressive <coughs> these teeth are. You can imagine what kind of debris that leaves. And if that stuff, I had it shielded on the inside, <coughs> if that stuff gets lodged in any of your, you know, it, it's an arcing potential. So my main thing was I got a little dirt devil here. I shot back, but I took a dirt devil because it's easy to control. Got to clean all that crap out. Clean it all out. Clean every little piece out. Just vacuum every surface you can while your energy's off. And, uh... Well, actually, I couldn't, you couldn't do it when the energy was off. I had to turn it back on, but I had I had cleaned out as much as I could to the point where it was just all lodged in here. And I took a vacuum and sucked everything. I would never, ever advise anybody to use compressed air because you can put compressed air in a tank, and I'm sure that you could probably have a, um, a battery-generated vacuum as well. Yeah, see, you can still see. No, that's a reflection. That's good. Anyway, so I, I thought that I had cleaned that out 100%. Now, I need to go through this one and clean it out. Um, but this one's cleaned out. But anyway, the point of the fact of the matter is, is clean all your debris up. Um, believe me, that's just one less thing you'll have to worry about, any kind of a flashing or arcing or anything, because who knows what's going on. What I'm going to do is take this Romex, take this 30-amp fuse, go here, power up my garage for the interim. Then I'm going to take this 125 amp. That's why I had to move. I was trying to move. Uh, that's why this wire is all jacked up. I had to move. I had a, a double stack situation over here as well. So I had to move one of these. It was this one um, here. The one that I took a double stack off and brought it over here so that I could have a two uh, a two pull for my 125 amp um, lead out 
So I'll take my one aught. Take this heavy S gauge wire, one aught. And I'll do a red, black, white from here to my 125 here. Yep. And that'll branch off and bring it over through to my 125 here. Then what I'll do is probably do a service entry type or a pop of, I've got I've got one gauge or two gauge going to my garage. So I've got a 125 amp it's on its way from um, is that right? I think I think that I've got 125 amp coming from um, no, I've got two 125 amp Siemens. So it's going to be off this 200 amp panel. It's going to be 125 to the 125. At, this is this was originally 100 to one to uh, 100 to 60 amp, and uh, I'm still. I went to the generator bible. They haven't got back to me. I'm going to figure out whether I can use the 50 and the 30 off of my generator. But in any event, I want to have the capacity. So I got the 125 to the 125 to the 125 to the 125. So at least I'll have an open gate. And to that end, when the generator switch, I'm hoping that I'll be able to put 100 or 80 or whatever it is um, from the generator into uh, things I want to run like I'm really considering I need to go figure out how much of the heating system I need to have like the air handler I know I have to have that and uh, do I need the air conditioner do I need to have does that air conditioner does that mean that it's running my condenser or the air handler is that running my condenser I think the air con is probably well I don't know but I know that the heating elements are probably running off of this um, 60 amp so I don't know how many that works yet, but to that end, um, I don't know if I can move that and have the capacity or not. But I know a lot of this other stuff is going to—it's going to open up a lot of room because I'm going to heat the floor somewhere. I know I'm going to put a sauna upstairs, uh, change out the uh, master bedroom, and not as worried about lights as I am uh, about the sauna. You know, it's going to be another 30 or 50 amps, so. In any event, I have the capacity now, so I'm going to run that cable, and I know I'm going to have to have a, I'm going to have to have an opening here um, for my generator to come in and hook into the 60 amp, and then my manual switch will be there. So everything is uh, coming on all right. I'm forgetting something, and I can't remember what it was. I thought that I had to put another tunnel here. I'll have to figure that out. But now I'm starting to get long-winded. I've got this ground wire. And that's another thing, too, is I know that this has got to be, the ground's got to be bonded. But I think I still have to run a ground wire to here, and then a ground wire to here. And I'm almost 99% sure that I've got to run my ground wire out to my sub-panel through the uh, schedule 80 and uh, then I'm going to take outside so everything's coming together it's all little bits drips and drabs but uh, I think it's going to be okay everything seems to be working I'm glad I got all that electric straightened out this is live of course I ban entry to this room until I get done messing around so until I get that, that panel on um, everything's muy bueno and I'm glad you guys come back man just keep coming back keep supporting me help me out I know I don't have that many viewers and I'm okay with that but I'll tell you what when I talk about it it helps me figure out issues because I'm not the smartest guy I don't really have the acumen for any one thing in particular except mechanics and I could probably do that in my sleep this stuff here is learn by process you know it's just on the fly everything's on the fly but I want it to look right oh and you know what the other day I told you that I, I used a uh, uh, masonry bit I, I used a regular bit. I couldn't figure out where it was. It was here. It was on these. See how nasty that looks? That's what you get when you don't have a masonry bit. Or when you don't have a, a um, 
Did I have the masonry? I don't think I did. Yeah, I did. I had the masonry bent because these are uh, Tavcon screws, but I did not have a hammer drill. That was the issue. And that is as nasty as it gets. But it's functional. It's up there. And if you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. So. Anyway, I figured that out. And you know, it's a learn by a process. But uh, that was, and I made another comment too, about 16 foot of... Uh, um, Gray PVC, they were 10 foot lengths. I got my, my numbers all jacked up. I guess I get beside myself and thinking about too many things and trying to uh, keep it all straight for uh, the video. But to that end, I made another expose. I meant to come here and just give you an update, but uh, um, I want to let you know it can be done. Anybody can do this. You just take your time and don't turn the water on. Thanks for coming back. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.